So, and we'll talk more about these human losses and how, what I think would be fair, but ultimately it's going to be your decision. What is a lifetime of pain worth that can't be rebuilt? So let's talk about the economic damages. Again, this is money that goes to somebody else. The medical bills for 167 treatments that came to Dr. Mobin and the surgery, like I said, this is a complex surgery that needed a top doctor. They're cutting into his bones, shaving his spine, replacing disc material like he was born with metal. It's a highly complicated surgery that has the risk of death or paralysis. We showed you both of these surgeries and what is fair and reasonable in the community for a top doctor like Dr. Mobin is $606,000. The future medical care, as we went through, you know, he's gonna require, because of these, this metal here, he's gonna require metal above and below, possibly. Just his, his, his sentence, his basically life sentence in his spine, it's a lifetime of spinal surgeries. A lifetime of risking death. A lifetime of risking paralysis. A lifetime of physical therapy following up to that, shots, all of that. And Dr. Mobin, he told us that the cost is around $450,000, $460,000 for all this best case scenario. If a surgery goes wrong, what does that mean? More surgeries. If he's gonna just need five more surgeries, it's gonna be tough. We're not asking for that. We're just saying that he's gonna need surgeries, adjacent surgeries, likely in 10 to 15 years, as Dr. Mosin said, in the neck and back. But let's talk about what the defense said. You remember Nancy Mulkowski? She was the person that is always hired by the defendants in cases like this to cut medical bills. She always goes against the injured party. Always, always hired by the defense to testify in trial. So what, but let's, I just want to take a step back and let's, let's think about what they're really trying to argue the, the, these two defendants here. Is they're trying to say, basically, is that you have Dr. Mobin, who is considered as a high performer, right? He's in the 80th, 90th percentile of doctors. But they're saying his bills are too high to cut down the bills, to not take responsibility for it. But what they're really saying, to really break it down, they're saying someone like Louis Acosta, a high school graduate, comes from pretty humble beginnings, only been an electrician, only worked with his hands, that those doctors, all these doctors, in this area, they're off limits to him. They're up here, he's just down here. Let's think about that for a second. They're saying, Mr. Acosta is not good enough. His spine is not good enough. His, him as a human being, as a man, a member of our community, he's not good enough for these doctors over here well, you know what? I guarantee you if the CEOs of these two corporations, their back goes out, you know for sure who they're going to. They're going to go all the way here. They'll pay top dollar. Someone that's going to cut into the bones of their spine. But for them, that's too expensive. Come on. Beverly Hills doctor, this guy should never have that. It's ridiculous. That's what they're saying. If you really break it down, if you really think about it saying he's not entitled to it because he's down here and they're up here. Because what, what they're doing, folks, is, is this. They're, these companies just want to discount their corporations. It's all about the bottom line. They're willing to hire somebody who they know only testifies for the defense to say, cut those bills. Let's cut them way down. Let's cut Mobin surgery down to $38,000 from 400000 Because they're just trying to get a discount. They just want you to award less so they can save money. What about the wage loss? We talked about the past wages, 266000 the future wage loss. We had Dr. Mobin, Mr. Vega talk about what the future looks like. But I think what's really important is if we listen to their own vocational rehab, 
Dr. Stoneberger. I actually liked him. I think he was a credible witness. I think he was a good witness. I think he's a good person because he tells the truth. He said, when we ask him, he's, I ask him, is he, he's mentally motivated to work. He's mentally motivated. He wants to work, but his body is holding him back. He said, correct. Because he knows how bad Louis Acosta wants to work. He hates being a burden. He hates being that person for his family. He loved his job. He agreed that his body is holding him back. Just imagine being a prisoner in your own body. That's what he's agreeing Mr. Acosta is suffering from. But, you know, the problem with the defense, they didn't stop there. Because that wasn't a discount. That wasn't going to help them. So, as we talked about, best case scenario, maybe he'll cut his wages, his work life will be cut in half. Worst case scenario, he'll never work again. We have been now going to have a seven-year gap in his resume. Everyone agreed he can't go back to work now, given his condition. He's going to have to wait at least another year or two to see how he, how he recovers. But he may never work again. And as you remember, Mr. Vega gave us two different scenarios. Um, he said that his pre-injury, he probably would have worked around another 22 years without the injury, given his type of work. Post-injury, if he's able to go back to work in a different type of job, maybe another 12 years, if he's 100% disabled, can't work his end, zero more years of working. And so the numbers, based on these amounts, 1.5 to 2.2. If he can go back to work, that's how much he's only going to lose. If he can't at all, 2.2 million. But again, that wasn't good enough for the defense. So the defense says, no, that's, we got to cut that down. So what they did is they hired this economist, David Weiner, who he said that we, had, hey, I mean, what he's saying, really, we actually did him a favor. Look, uh, he would have made, if this had never happened, he would have made 800000 we hit you with a roof house, we can double your salary, is basically what they're saying. They're saying that he could now make, as a salesman, $1.4 million. That they did him a favor. That they're now going to make him more money. Like, as an electrician, you weren't going to make anything. Now you can double your income, and you can be a salesman. That's literally, and that's what these numbers say. I'm surprised they didn't ask for money back here. And that's really what they're trying to say. Because again, this is just, they're trying to try every which way to find a discount. Every single possible way, when they call, do something wrong, they will find every single avenue. They won't leave a stone unturned unless they can try to get a discount from them. Again, they gambled because they didn't realize they had to face you. They didn't have to face the jury. So let's talk about the human damages. <clears throat> and I keep bringing this up because I think it's so important how we value things in our society. Because these are the hardest damages to think about, right? This is why in jury selection, when we talked about it, it's so easy to put all those numbers in to equations and spreadsheets, and that's easy. We don't lose sleep over that. You guys can figure that out easily. But why do we have the jury system decide this? Because you are human beings who have all experienced pain, sadness, isolation, it feels like to be alone, to not be able to be part of a group, being anxious about your next paycheck, having to leave your apartment and move back in with your parents. We know what feelings like, how mental suffering is oftentimes worse than the actual physical pain. Give me a broken arm every day as opposed to just the mental suffering from sadness or hurt or pain. So again, this is how we talk about valuing buildings. That's easy. $300 million, $40 million, $750 billion, or million, no, $75 million for a jet. All these things, so big numbers, right? Well, I, I'm bringing these up because I think big injuries, are worth big, big, it's big money. It's all we have. It feels cold. It feels callous, but it's all we have. This man, it, his life was going like this, right? You try to get better over time. I mean, things progress. You get raises. You're more confident in yourself. You have more wisdom. You're looking forward to your life. We're optimistic. I think human beings are eternal optimists. But as soon as that hatch hit him, his life starts to go like this. His spine's not going to get any better as he, as he ages. I can promise him that. It's not going to get better as any of us age. 
he's always going to be in pain. He had to hear the doctor say, you're going to have to do this again. The spine surgery, you're going to have to do it again. He heard those. So, and we'll talk more about these human losses and how, what I think would be fair, but ultimately it's going to be your decision. What is a lifetime of pain worth that can't be rebuilt? So let's talk about the economic damages. Again, this is money that goes to somebody else. The medical bills for 167 treatments that came to Dr. Moven from the surgery. Like I said, this is a complex surgery that needed a top doctor. They're cutting into his bones, shaving his spine, replacing disc material like he was born with metal. It's a highly complicated surgery. It has the risk of death or paralysis. We showed you both of these surgeries and what is fair and reasonable in the community for a top doctor like Dr. Moven is $606,000. The future medical care, as we went through, you know, he's gonna require, because of these, this metal here, he's gonna require metal above and below, possibly. Just his, his, his sentence, his basically life sentence in his spine, it's a lifetime of spinal surgeries. A lifetime of risking death. A lifetime of risking paralysis. A lifetime of physical therapy following up to that. Shots, all of that. And Dr. Moven, he told us that the cost is around $450,000, $460,000 for all this. Best case scenario. If a surgery goes wrong, what does that mean? More surgeries. If he's going to just need five more surgeries, it's going to be tough. We're not asking for that. We're just saying that he's going to need surgeries, adjacent surgeries, likely in 10 to 15 years, as Dr. Moven said, in the neck and back. But let's talk about what the defense said. You remember Nancy Mulkowski? She was the person that is always hired by the defendants in cases like this to cut medical bills. She always goes against the injured party. Always, always hired by the defense to testify in trial. So what, but let's, I just want to take a step back and let's, let's think about what they're really trying to argue with the, the, these two defendants here. Is they're trying to say, basically, is that you have Dr. Mobin, who is considered as a high performer, right? He's in the 80th, 90th percentile of doctors. But they're saying his bills are too high to cut down the bills, to not take responsibility for it. But what they're really saying, to really break it down, they're saying someone like Louis Acosta, a high school graduate, comes from pretty humble beginnings, has only been an electrician, only worked with his hands, that those doctors, all these doctors in this area, they're off limits to him. They're up here, he's just down here. Let's think about that for a second. They're saying Mr. Acosta is not good enough. His spine is not good enough. His, him as a human being, as a man, a member of our community, he's not good enough for these doctors over here. Well, you know what? I guarantee you if the CEOs of these two corporations, their back goes out, you know for sure who they're going to. They're going to go all the way here. They'll pay top dollar. Someone that's going to cut into the bones of their spine. But for them, that's too expensive. Come on. Beverly Hills doctor, this guy should never have that. It's ridiculous. That's what they're saying. If you really break it down, if you really think about it. They're saying he's not entitled to it. Because he's down here, and they're up here. Because what, what they're doing, folks, is, is this. They're, these companies just want to discount their corporations. It's all about the bottom line. They're willing to hire somebody who they know only testifies for the defense to say, cut those bills. Let's cut them way down. Let's cut Moban's surgery down to $38,000 from $400,000. Because they're just trying to get a discount. They just want you to award less so they can save money. What about the wage loss? We talked about the past wages, 266000 the future wage loss. We had Dr. Moven, Mr. Vega talk about what the future looks like. 
But I think what's really important is if we listen to their own vocational rehab. Dr. Stoneburner, I actually liked him. I think he was a credible witness. I think he was a good witness. I think he's a good person because he tells the truth. He said, when we asked him, he's, I asked him, is he, he's mentally motivated to work. He's mentally motivated. He wants to work, but his body is holding him back. He said, correct. Because he knows how bad Louis Acosta wants to work. He hates being a burden. He hates being that person for his family. He loved his job. He agreed that his body is holding him back. Just imagine being a prisoner in your own body. That's what he's agreeing Mr. Acosta is suffering from. But, you know, the problem with the defense, they didn't stop there because that wasn't a discount. That wasn't going to help them. So, as we talked about, best case scenario, maybe he'll cut his wage, his work life will be cut in half. Worst case scenario, he'll never work again. We have been now going to have a seven year gap in his resume. Everyone agreed he can't go back to work now given his condition. He's going to have to wait at least another year or two to see how he, how he recovers. But he may never work again. And as you remember, Mr. Vega gave us two different scenarios. Um, he said that his pre-injury, he probably would have worked around another 22 years without the injury, given his type of work. Post-injury, if he's able to go back to work in a different type of job, maybe another 12 years, if he's 100% disabled, can't work again, zero more years of working. And so the numbers, based on these amounts, 1.5 to 2.2. If he can go back to work, that's how much he's only going to lose. If he can't at all, 2.2 million. But again, that wasn't good enough for the defense. So the defense says, no, that's, we got to cut that down. So what they did is they hired this economist, David Weiner, who he said that we, had, hey, I mean, what he's saying, really, we actually did him a favor. Look, uh, he would have made, if this had never happened, he would have made 800000 we hit you with a roof house, we can double your salary, is basically what they're saying. They're saying that he could now make, as a salesman, $1.4 million. That they did him a favor. That they're now going to make him more money. Like, as an electrician, you weren't going to make anything. Now you can double your income, and you can be a salesman. That's literally, and that's what these numbers say. I'm surprised they didn't ask for money back here. And that's really what they're trying to say. Because again, this is just, they're trying to try every which way to find a discount. Every single possible way, when they call, do something wrong, they will find every single avenue. They won't leave a stone unturned unless they can try to get a discount from them. Again, they gambled because they didn't realize they had to face you. They didn't have to face the jury. So let's talk about the human damages. <clears throat> and I keep bringing this up because I think it's so important how we value things in our society. Because these are the hardest damages to think about, right? This is why in jury selection, when we talked about it, it's so easy to put all those numbers in to equations and spreadsheets, and that's easy. We don't lose sleep over that. You guys can figure that out easily. But why do we have the jury system decide this? Because you are human beings who have all experienced pain, sadness, isolation, it feels like to be alone, to not be able to be part of a group, being anxious about your next paycheck, having to leave your apartment, and move back in with your parents. We know what feelings like, how mental suffering is oftentimes worse than the actual physical pain. Give me a broken arm every day as opposed to just the mental suffering from sadness or hurt or pain. So again, this is how we talk about valuing buildings. That's easy. $300 million, $40 million, $750 billion, or million, no, $75 million for a jet. All these things, so big numbers, right? Well, I, I'm bringing these up because I think big injuries, are worth big, big, it's big money. It's all we have. It feels cold. It feels callous, but it's all we have. This man, it, his life was going like this, right? You try to get better over time. I mean, things progress. You get raises. You're more confident in yourself. You have more wisdom. You're looking forward to your life. We're optimistic. I think human beings are eternal optimists. But as soon as that hatch hit him, his life starts to go like this. His spine's not going to get any better as he, as he ages. I can promise him that. It's not going to get better as any of us age. 
He's always going to be in pain. He had to hear the doctor say, you're going to have to do this again. The spine surgeon's going to have to do it again. He heard those, all this testimony about how his life, this is just what his life has written now. This is what, he didn't ask for this. So, yes, these, it, it's, the reason I bring this up, this is how we value things in society, but Mona Lisa's not going to feel pain. The, the jet engine doesn't feel pain. I mean, LeBron James will feel pain, but I think he's pretty well paid. The, this, this building certainly won't feel pain, but this is a lot of money. How do we value things? How, are you, how should we value the pain and suffering? So I'm going to try to give you some guidance on how to do it, but ultimately it's up to you. Because you're the ones who decide. I don't decide. The defense attorney doesn't decide. So here's some, some guidance that I think is fair, what I think is reasonable, based on what Mr. Acosta is left with. So we talked about the lack of sleep. Remember, he said that a good night, two to three hours, and the pain wakes him up. So what he tries to do is he tries to stay up as late as possible. Lights on, watch TV, try to stay up as late as possible until he gets so tired, so tired, and he'll just sleep through it. But even when he does that, two hours later, three hours later, boom, the pain hits, he's up, uh, it's not going to go away. But on a bad night, the bad nights, he's up every 45 minutes. This is not just a one-week getaway where he feels like this. This is every night, every single night since this roof hatch fell on him. And the thing is, is he can't, like, we can't snap our fingers and make it go away. This is every night the rest of his life, the next 40 years. And knowing that he's going to have to deal with that lack of sleep, and he's always going to be groggy, he's going to be short-tempered. That's his life sentence, this lack of sleep. He talked about... <sighs> The work, how this is one of the biggest things he misses. He misses the camaraderie. He misses that job. He wanted to retire as an electrician. Now what can you do? He's applied. We went through the stack about this high of uh, applications. No one wants to hire him. Who's going who's to hire an electrician to climb ladders and carry heavy loads who can only lift 10 pounds? So he has to relearn a new profession. He's been out of work for so long. He didn't sign up for that. His social life. He used to be the life of the party. Now what he does when, <clears throat> when he's going to a wedding, he, it's a family wedding. They all get in the car, his mom, his dad, his aunts, uncles, cousins, they all caravan together. Now as you heard him, when he, when he gets out of bed, and he's like, oh, this is going to be a bad day. So he says, all right, mom, you know what? I, I, I don't want to be that burden. I'm going to have to just take my own car. So what he does is now he goes to events, takes his own car, drives by himself, has to stop a few times if he's driving a long distance because the back, his back hurts too bad. He goes to the event, he's there for a while, and he's trying to find, okay, where's the closest place he can sit? Where's the closest bench? Okay, I got one here in case my back goes up. So he, he's got that, but then ultimately, inevitably, his back's going to go out. He has to leave early. And you know what he has to do? He sits in his, he sits in his bed. It's on Facebook or Instagram, like most of us do. And he sees pictures from the event. And he just thinks to himself, he just thinks, man, I, like, I have another event. I have to miss out on. Moving home, as he talked about, he was living alone, living with roommates, had his own place, progressing in life, like we all want. He had to go backwards to move home with his parents. Didn't was too embarrassed to tell his girlfriend about it at the time. It took four months for her to find out. He was too embarrassed. It's hard for him to start relationships when he's living at home with mom and dad. His attitude is now short with people. All the activities he can no longer do. And ultimately, and the reason for most of this is the pain. Good days, he wakes up, he's in like a two or a three. He said, all right, all right, I can do things this, today. So he does things, you know, he does things slowly. He tries to do everything he used to do. He can't do nearly the same things, but he tries. Because he's an optimist. He's not going to let this be his life sentence. But on the bad days, he's home for two days straight. If he overexerts himself, he's done for a week. At home, on the couch, just being a shell of who he used to be. Again, we talk about all these pieces of art. We call them priceless. They're worth tens of millions of dollars. They don't feel pain. They don't have sleepless nights. This Andy Warhol's not going to lose any friends. They're just not. 
again, the, the, we put intrinsic value totaling here billions of billion plus dollars of the art on this screen right here. It doesn't cry. It's not angry. It's not happy. It doesn't feel joy. But we give it that value. Billion, a billion dollars. But we give it. Okay, so again, this is why we have human jurors decide these cases. Because this is what the law allows. The law says that you can recover, you prove the other side caused it for all of these items. So, when you look at the damages, the law says that you can consider the life expectancy. Some people are going to live shorter, some are going to live longer. In this case, the tables come out, 40 year old man, about 38.7 years, around 39 years. It's not an exact science. Let's talk about this amount of time. 39 years from today or tomorrow, whenever you render your verdict, 39 years, 38 years. It's easy just to say, but how long is that, really? I think this is what 30, 38, 39 years looks like in the future. 468 months. This is now for 39 years. 39 years of pain, sleepless nights. Who knows where he's going to be living. Missing out on wedding, a wedding here. Dating, having sex. All this stuff over the years that meanders, that makes us human, that makes uh, our life worth living. The things you can't put a price tag on. This is what his life sentence is going to be. It's 14,000 days. 336, I think that, how much time that is. It's hard for me to understand how far that is. got to think backwards. What was it like 39 years ago? You just think about what... So, this is how long ago it was. 1982, the year I was born. Ronald Reagan was president. The CD player just came out. A song called Centerfield. Centerfold? No, Centerfold. Sorry, I know Centerfold. Uh, that, that just came out. Average cost of gas is $1.30 a gallon. $2 for a movie ticket. It's insane. $83,000 for the price of a new house. Think about that. We're talking 39 years ago. Just put it in context, how long ago that feels, right? <clears throat> crazy. So it was a crazy amount of time ago when all these things were popular when who the president was. But that's how we have to think about the future. 39 years from now, how long that is, how meaningful that is, that time. That's all he has, is time. And again, I want to keep, because this is how we value things, so how are we going to value these things? And when I put up these numbers, I'm going to put them by year. Because I think that's a good way to understand. That's a, that's a way I have found to be, the way I help understand how much these things are worth. But when we put them on a year basis, and when you look at these numbers, I want you to not equate them to a salary. That this is how much you make a year, how much he made a year, how much any of us make a year. Because this isn't, you're not, you can't equate this to a salary. And I'll tell you why. Because salaries, you know, a job, clock in at nine, you leave at five. Eight hours, nine hour days, some of us work longer, some of us work less. But then you're done, typically. But for Mr. Coffee,